We're going to put the bouffant ponytail cap together now. The ponytail cap has three pattern pieces, um, a large ellipses, um, that piece, and a long strap. We're going to start with a long strap. We're going to um, turn it into bias tape for ties. I use the double pin and ironing board method of making bias tape. Um, if you have a bias tape attachment to your um, sewing machine, that's fine. So we're gonna start out by folding these pieces over and we're gonna slide them under our pin. First pin, Straighten it back out. Um, it's okay if they're a little uneven. This doesn't have to be exact. Okay, so I've got it through. I'm gonna come back here and make sure my fold. Can you guys see that? So this isn't exactly bias tape um, because this bias tape should have only been two inches. Um, but this will give us a nice stout strap. So I'm going to put my iron into place and I'm just going to pull this through. Um, and two hands makes this go much smoother in my experience. So, <laughs> and a little bit neater if you have two hands. My uh, cameraman is currently not agreeing to film for me. So, going to keep pulling that through and tidying it up as I go. Okay, so there's my bias tape. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. And I'm just going to fold it in half and seam that right on down. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be back. I'm ready to go now. Sort of. Obviously, if you have two hands, you can do a little bit neater of a job than I'm doing at the moment. Don't be like me and cut your finger. Don't be like me and break your thread. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm re-threaded and I'm back. I'm gonna struggle badly because I only have one hand. Um, somebody's probably going to obviously note that this is not true bias tape because it's not cut on a bias. Um, it's not even really binding because it's not cut on the bias. But 
We now have our sewn strap, and yes, I have a nasty little knot there. It'll be fine. Okay. We're going to cut that in half, and we'll be right back. Okay. So we've done our strap, so we're going to set those aside. And now we're going to pull out our big circle piece. And we're going to find the ovaly side of it. Okay. So that's my ovaly side here. And we're going to put in a box plate here and then four plates facing in that direction, four plates facing in that direction. And I'm going to go get my cameraman for this. Okay, so here's my box plate. I've got my center fold here. Um, so we want about an inch and a half of a box plate on this side. And it doesn't have to be precise. It's very okay to eyeball this. Um, actually, I need a little bit more there. If you're a super precise sewer, I'm going to drive you crazy because I'm not a super precise sewer. Um, we just need functional. Okay, so that one is going that way. The other half of the box. That one this way. Everybody say thank you to Alan, my husband, who is holding the phone for me now. We're going to do four one-inch pleats in this direction. Okay, and then four in this direction. Can you see my hands okay, huh? Mm -hmm. You do not have to be precise because um, the back of this is going to be gathered. I'm going to move it a little bit to make it easier for me to connect. Now, I like to baste before I iron because I've not had good luck ironing with pins in. So I'm going to take this and just put a light basting stitch across. Go ahead and pause. I'm just going to slowly pull pins as I go. Hold that thought. I have to rethread my machine again because I'm using cheap thread and it's a horrible idea. So we're just going to do a gentle basting stitch in to hold our pleats um, for a little bit of manhandling. I don't know how many new sewers we have sewing. Um, but don't forget to lower your tension to zero for your basting stitch and to widen your stitches. So, 
quick basting stitch. Now we're going to run this over and press it real quick. So flatten it out. It doesn't have to all be pressed. You just want it to be smooth enough to um, make it easy to sew. So from there, you've got that and that. You're going to find, you're going to grab this piece on your board, fold it in half. Get it nice and even and give it a good press. Um, the next step I'm going to do with my serger. If you do not have a serger, you can finish your seam by either French seaming or you can um, just zigzag over your seam allowance. Either one is fine. Whichever you would prefer to do is fine. Or if you have a surgery, you're welcome to send these with a surgery. So you're going to find your center, raw edge, line that up with that. I like to use my folding clips, my foot clips for this part. Um, just line it up, get it started. I don't use a whole lot of clips. If you want to pin this the whole way out, you're welcome to. Um, I don't pin. Um, I use my clips minimally. So I will throw another clip there. And then I'll come to this side and do the same thing. Just a pin or two. You can always take a break and reline fabric up. Now I'm going to my serger. And we're going to serge the whole way around this circle. Oh wait, we're going to attach these two. So we're also going to add these straps in here at the back. So you're going to do one strap on this side, one strap on that side. Surge the whole bugger right on through. For this, I am going to trim a little bit of fabric off as I go because my pleats were not even. Um, doesn't have to be much, just to even everything up, make it nice and tidy. Make sure I'm still lined up there. this because then we're going to tuck it under and turn it into a cape. And I should have attached my other strap when I got to the end, but I didn't, so I will go back and do that with my sewing machine in a moment. Overrun our stitches a bit, about an inch. To stitch off. Um, I am not going to bury my seams. I'm going to knot them for the sake of time. So, knot it up against the fabric and then trim it like that. That secures that. Now, I forgot to put my tie on the other end. So I'm going to come here after I check all my seams, make sure everything's still nice and tight. And I'm going to go ahead and lay that on top. I dropped it. <clears throat> and I'm going to stitch that in and then I'm going to come back over and serge that real quick. So I'm adjusting my setting back to a four. I'm making my stitch width fairly narrow to tack this on. And I'm just going to tack this real quick. I'm also going to go and anchor the other side with my sewing machine because sometimes a serger stitch is not as tight or as trusted as um, the sewing machine. It's just not going to give you as good of a seam. Okay. Let me anchor that one. Okay. 
Okay. Now we're going to flip this right side out. And you can go ahead and pull this out now, or you can do it later. Doesn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this little basting stitch out now. Threads are going in the thread catcher. If you don't have one, you should make one. They're awesome. Apologize for the noise in the background. That's just an angry cat trying to get out of my laundry room. I did not need any disturbances while videoing this. Okay, so we're going to pretend like I did that. Now, we're going to take this edge and fold it over about three quarters of an inch. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. I like to put a basting stitch in, again, the whole way around on my serger edge so that I can cinch it up and get a good tight press um, and a gather. Let me take that out nice and long again. Oh, this thread. Bear with me. I'm just going to re-thread real quick. Back up just a little bit. Try that again. Okay, there we go. It's a nice big basting stitch the whole way around so I can gather this and get a nice even press so that I can come in and sew it as a casing. Um, you're going to need your iron for this next little bit. And you don't want to go up completely to here because we need to leave an opening for the casing. So I'm going to needle up and pull. And I want to leave some length on this because I want to have something to pull with. Because I don't know where my... Uh, Okay, so we're going over to the iron again. Um, some of you ladies probably already know this trick. Um, but you're gonna gather your fabric ever so slightly to get a nice, even um, hem on something round. So I want ballparkish between half and three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm going to go with closer to a three quarters because we are using um, upcycled. I guess that's the fancy word for it right now. Upcycled elastic from fitted sheets. Um, and I did not cut the casing off of mine um, because that was going to require entirely too much seam ripping. Um, I'm just not doing that. So it already has fabric on it. So leave yourself lots of space. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't waste a ton of time trying for, for, for perfection here. Leave yourself space to work. There's still plenty of room for hair in this thing. Okay. So I got a quick press. I'm going back to the sewing machine. And I'm going to sew down that casing. Make sure I fix my tension, shorten my stitch length. And I'm leaving a space open so that I can get that elastic in. Okay. And now I'm just going to sew right along. So I would guess that that one there is definitely more than an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. And you know what? I'm okay with that. They don't have to be exact. Don't sweat the small stuff, ladies. I know so many sewers who are such perfectionists that just don't sweat the small stuff. Okay. Back tack to finish that. Um, if you have a bodkin, now is going to be a wonderful time to use it. I do not have a bodkin, so I will be using a paper clip. Oh, there's my scissors. 
some clean up some strings. Um, you can pull that basting stitch out. I probably just sewed over it again. So far, we have this and then more strings um, with our ties and then this. Let me grab my elastic. So I have a six inch piece of elastic. Yeah, it's still in the fabric. Not a big deal. It'll be just fine that way. I left that casing nice and big. I'm going to go ahead and attach my safety pin to the end. And then I'm going to start feeding it through. Okay. Um, let me get it in there and then I'm going to tack that side in place before it's bunched up to make my life just a little bit easier. Um, if you're a much more meticulous sewer, I apologize for my um, wild sewing manner. Okay, so I've got that there. It's folded over to where I want it now. We are making a smaller stitch length, and then I'm just going to zigzag that into place for now. A little bit of a bar tack. Okay, so now that's anchored. Now we're just going to gather this bugger onto this and tack it on the other end. Um, this definitely is not as easy because it has the fabric already on it. Um, it's not hard though, and it would definitely be easier with a bodkin. Everybody following along okay? Anybody have any questions? Feel free to hit me up on Facebook. Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-I, Shaw, S-H-A-W, on Facebook. Um, or Miss Laura can give you my phone number. You're welcome to call me anytime. Okay, so I've got it right there. I'm just going to tack it down there again. Put needle back over it like it's a snake in the road. Okay. There's my gather. I'm going to even that out a little bit. I'll come back and trim my strings, but let me demonstrate. I have a little ponytail. Ponytail goes in. Is that where I want it? Crisscross my straps here, up around the ponytail, secure it in place. Thanks, ladies. Have a great night.